Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor, and I ran out of coffee just now, which normally is a really big problem, but here's what happened. A while back, and I remembered this, usually I would have forgotten, but I remembered that a while back we were going, I, I can't remember if we were going to go to Florida or to the mountains or something, and I told my wife to buy one of those cans of that instant coffee, like Folgers Instant Coffee, where you just warm up some or you heat up some water and then you take a scoop of this instant coffee and put it in the in the, the coffee cup after it's hot water and I remembered we had some of that now those of you that have had instant coffee this stuff is not the best tasting stuff but it's still a temporary replacement if you have to deal with it <laughs> it, it has its own taste to it not my favorite but it's better than not having coffee at all and I didn't feel like going to the store and I would put this video together. So here we go. Now, the market, uh, especially Bitcoin has been taking off. Bitcoin has now come up over 12K. And I think that's significant. I think it makes a, a difference for the whole market. But I'll, but while I was showing, and XRP has been up, um, let's see, Bitcoin's up 4.85%, XRP's up 2.96. Um, my other favorite, Stellar, up 0.71. But that's not what I want to show you. I want to show you something. For those of you who are in this crypto space because you're thinking, hey, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get wealthy and all and da-da-da-da-da. Okay, a lot of people are here for that reason. I want to illustrate a point for you. Okay, let's look at the all-time highs on these digital assets because something needs to click in your mind. All right? The all-time high for Bitcoin is 20089 It's now at 12467 all-time high for XRP is $3.84. It's now at $0.25. Cent. You can go down to most of these altcoins. Look at Stellar. $0.08 cents now. It was as high as $0.93. Cents, okay? I want you to look at what your prospects are moving forward. If all of these hit their all-time high, if Bitcoin, if you're a Bitcoin holder and it hits its all-time high of $20,089, that's a 61% increase. If Ethereum hits its all-time high, that's a 271% increase. If XRP hits its all-time high or Bitcoin Cash is 1,428% or 1,573%, okay? And then if you go down to Stellar, since we used it, 1,021%. Tron would be 1,012%. Cardano would be 1,158%. I wanted to show you that more specifically XRP because I think XRP is the one. And that was, it shows how long ago that was. It was 1,021 days ago is when XRP hit its all time high. But when I look at this, what I see is the real money was made on Bitcoin by the guys who were there prior to 2017. I see these altcoins, especially XRP, as the ones with the true potential. I own some Bitcoin, but it's only more or less as an insurance policy. The insurance policy being, what if we're all wrong and Bitcoin's the only one, which we're not. But what if we were and Bitcoin was the only digital asset that was going to be or be allowed or whatever? It's an insurance policy. I would at least have a break even situation, wouldn't I? But Bitcoin is dinosaur technology. It's not going to end that way. XRP is the one and, and Stellar is the other, in my opinion. And I believe that the appreciation, in fact, I believe this 1428 is peanuts compared to where we're going. And I, I believe 20,000 for Bitcoin is peanuts compared to where it's going. I believe all of this is peanuts compared to where these are going. And I think in the, in the process of that, you'll have many of these digital assets that will go by the wayside. The ones that are either frauds or no use case and all of that. Okay. I believe Bitcoin is the only one with no use case that's going to be allowed to go through if there is one. The rest of them will die. Okay. XRP, since it's the one, I believe 1,428% appreciation is a joke.
compared to what's coming for us. Now, tons of interesting news today. Let's go. XRP crypto will Bitcoin cross 12,000 as the U.S. Tre Treasury Mnuchin and House Speaker Pelosi near stimulus deal rose on renewed optimism for the second pandemic stimulus package since cryptocurrency is a hedge against inflation while the U.S. dollar plunged. Biggest news maybe since we got in the digital asset space is this. PayPal granted New York's first conditional bit license to offer crypto services, folks. And I want, the important part of this I wanted to show you is that the four um, DFS approved digital assets will initially will be initially available, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ether, and Litecoin, according to DFS statement. Now, this, I wanted you to see, this is Mike Novogratz. He says, this PayPal news is the biggest news of the year in crypto. All banks will now be on a race to service crypto. We have crossed the Rubicon, people. Exciting day. And he's retweeting this. Finally, PayPal joins the Bitcoin space race. 340 6 million users, 26 million merchants, 20th largest bank by deposits between them, Square and Grayscale. It's safe to assume that all remaining Bitcoin will be hoovered by public companies. All right, and then there's this. Anders um, L., sometimes I just wonder what's really going on behind the scenes. This is what's important, folks. What's really going on behind the scenes. This is a quote from the PayPal, um, uh, what is his role? We're working with Central uh, di Digital Currency Help. It. He said, I guess this is a guy at PayPal. We are working with central banks and thinking of all forms of digital currencies and how PayPal can play a role. Now, this was a reply to a tweet. In my opinion, PayPal not having XRP as a buying option might be a good thing. XRP was not meant for retail. It was meant to do a job, and that is to settle cross-border transactions. Being this is its primary job. Let the companies deal with the buying and selling. I believe this guy's on to something. Watch this. Um, there's a guy driving by right now that's staring at me. That was creepy. Don't know what that was about. Okay. Jonathan D sent me this from Michelle Bond, who runs the regulation, regulatory, uh, I, for, I don't, governmental regulatory affairs out of DC, I believe for Ripple, okay? She says, great work, great work, Linda Lacewell and Matt Homer and New York Department of Financial Services, responsible innovation. And she the, she's retweeting this Linda Lacewell's tweet about congratulations to PayPal and Paxos Global. So this lady works uh, for, she's a member of Governor Cuomo's cabinet, um, New York Department of Financial Services superintendent. So she helped to make it happen. So Michelle Bond, who works for Ripple, is congratulating her on this. You are you? Do you want to buy my igloo in South Georgia, or do you? Or you want, because if you're one of those people that believes that Ripple is not in the game here, then you need to buy my igloo. It is a great buy, even though it will melt in 24 hours. It is an excellent igloo for South Georgia. I mean, come on, folks. This is a. I don't have my. I don't have my other coffee mug, but I can do this. Did sun draw you a picture, Tom? Come on, folks. All right. Uh, then uh, Catherine Coley says, Welcome, PayPal, to putting your, your user's future first. Next up, Zelle. Now, why is Catherine Coley, who also worked at Ripple, bringing up Zelle? Do you know what Zelle is? Let me remind you. IBM, this is from back in January 3rd, 2020. IBM launches new payment systems with Zelle. Anyone interested in the fact that Stellar hired the creator of Zelle and that Stellar is already partners with IBM? Do I smell a JPM Stellar partnership? Well, for those of you that didn't know, his name's Mike Kennedy, and he works for Interstellar. He's the CEO of Interstellar. Do you know who the CTO of Interstellar is? That would be the creator of both Stellar and XRP, Jed McCaleb. He is the CTO. Interstellar is Stellar's Ripple. Okay? Or XLM's Ripple. And you look down here, and this is the guy who, he went to Harvard, and he created co-founder of Zelle, which is owned by the banks, by the way. Stuart XRP tweeted this to me. Watch this. This guy, look, this is Michael Saylor that just um, 
had added Bitcoin holdings for his cut for micro strategy. He's dead on point on this. Two, two minutes, five seconds. You want to understand one of the core reasons people are flooding and are going to be flooding into digital assets. Bitcoin XRP Stellar. Here it is. Okay, so Keith, I have a comment on, on Claude Ford. First of all, there's a group of people in the world that you trade with that believe that in inflation is equal to CPI and therefore you can define a Claude Ford. There's a group of people that I, that I align with, the Bitcoiners, that believe that the true inflation rate is not CPI, but rather it's the asset inflation rate. It's the rate at which the long bond or the T-bill or equities have been moving up for the past decade or the expansion of the monetary supply. So if you focus on inflation as CPI, it's 1% or less. If you would focus on inflation as the monetary supply expansion, it's 15%. And I actually think that the inflation rate for the past decade is 20%. If you look at the cost of a, of, of a 10 year bond that yields $50,000 a year in interest, it went from a million to 10 million in 10 years. That's 22% inflation. So they're a different, you know, over the near term, if you're trading with people that, that buy into your CPI definition as inflation, then that works. But if you're looking over the long term and you're trading with people that actually buy into the asset inflation rate as the inflation rate, you come to a different conclusion. Well, yes, my, and my last point is in the near term, Keith, in the near term, these things work. But over the long term, adoption makes sense. Like all of your arguments about why you should short Facebook in 2013, they're all wrong. Facebook's trading at 280 bucks a, sh a share. They're all wrong. You should have never sold it ever, ever, ever. Now, what happens to all these wonderful models if 10 billionaires decide to buy $1 billion of Bitcoin each and announce we bought it, we're not ashamed of it, we're gonna buy more. All your models are destroyed, completely devastated, Bitcoin goes to the moon because what really matters is with Facebook, does it work? Do a billion people use it? And what the core of what's important in what he said there is we've been lied to these central banks. What they've done is they've, they tell you that there's no inflation while they are the ones that are coming up with the definition of what inflation is. And they're the ones that decide what's included in inflation. And it's a lie. They've lied to us for years and years and years. When, when you're the price of a movie, I use this all the time. When the price of a movie ticket when I'm a kid is $2 and 50 cents and today it's more like 15 to $20, that's called inflation. And they have lied to us about how fast that has increased. Anybody who goes to the grocery store knows that they have lied. They've kept things out that would have driven that number up. And everybody knows it. And that's why people have, have gone into gold. That's why people have gone into crypto. That's why Bitcoin is still around. That's why crypto is going to be a thing. And everybody knows it. You know, for years, it's been a frustrating thing to watch people believe lies. Another lie that we've been, that has been sold to us. And that is that debt is a good thing. We've been sold the idea that you're supposed to go into debt. The debt, you know, the debt's, oh, that's, oh yeah, $23 trillion in debt. But oh yeah, you know, that we, that's no big deal right now. We'll worry about that down. No, that's all a lie. And everybody knows it. Anybody with a brain or just a little bit of common sense. Then Mike Novogratz comes in and tweets this. This, I mean, you're starting to see these companies moving by Bitcoin. Look at this. A movement. Mo new Mode Global Holdings PLC, a UK listed company, has announced it will place 10% of its cash reserves into Bitcoin as a part of its treasury investment strategy. So more and more we're seeing it now. This I thought was a great graphic. Governments every time Bitcoin pumps, they're turning the fiat dollar, the fiat currencies down and it shows a sad face. <laughs> That's funny. All right. Um, Crypto Dim sent me this. Friendly reminder from Real XRP, boy, I love this. On the one hand, we're a startup, but on the other hand, we also have a have deep connections with financial institutions. This is the core of the reason I've never stopped talking about Ripple or XRP because I believe there's a lot more to this than we even know. Okay, 
Uh, XRP Crypto Wolf, Washington, D.C. veteran, said money is key for cryptocurrency issues to be heard in Congress. Ripple is one of the first crypto companies to lobby congressmen, which is why they also set up a Ripple office in Washington, D.C. Next, James Rule, who was crypto's most influential in 2020? Vote now. Here's the, some of the people that they have on the list. Uh, there's like Brian Armstrong. Al, Alan Silbert is Barry Silbert's brother. Anthony Pompliano, they have on the list. Um, let's see, Craig Wright, uh, Christian Carlo, People's Bank of China's on the list. Um, let's see who else. There's Brad Garlinghouse for bringing charges against YouTube. Let's see, Jesse Powell from Kraken, Arthur Hayes for remaining out of grasp. <laughs> um, let's see, what do they have? Um, there's Michael Sailors on the list. Do they have uh what's his face that just got uh, um the guy that the the guy that's did, that's always doing the crazy videos that just got arrested? How can you not have him on this list? Maybe he is on here and I just didn't see him. Um Ah, why am I drawing a blank on my favorite guy that does the uh that mixes the drinks and says all the crazy stuff and has the machine guns and all <laughs> it's like crazy. Anyway. Uh, John Mc, Mc, McAfee, McAfee, that's who I'm trying to think of. Sorry. I don't know how I drew a blank on that. All right. Um, Michael at VAL5 links, 50 million XRP shifted by BitGo. Half of it went to Ripple's ODL corridor. In this article, it says the corridor, it was to Bitstamp for Euro, the European corridor. Now, Central Bank Payments News. A new interbank payment system will be launched by the Central Bank of Iceland on the 23rd of October. The system will take over the world, the role of both the Central Bank's real-time gross settlement system and the, whatever, however you say that word, netting system. When I read this, the first thing that I thought of was this, a tweet from um, October 3rd of 2019 from Ripple. Our new team in Iceland will play an integral role in the ongoing development of on-demand liquidity, which utilizes the digital asset XRP for production, production cross-border payments. With built-in expertise in trading and exchanges, the addition of Algram's engineering talent to our team will be instrumental in continuing the momentum we're already experiencing with on-demand liquidity. So Ripple had a team in Iceland that they had an engineering team in Iceland working as of October the 3rd, 2019. Very interesting. And so is this. This is Anna Manuel, who is on Ripple's board. I believe she's on the board or she's, um, it was either the board or she's an advisor to Ripple, one or the other. Extremely connected to some of the most powerful people. She works in for Rice Hadley Gates and that would be Condoleezza Rice, who worked in the Bush administration administration. Um, please join me this morning along with this guy and UCLA uh, uh, law professor Alex Wang as we discuss ways to stay competitive in the tech race war race with China. How to win the tech race with China. So she's carrying on that same theme from Chris Larson and Brad Garlinghouse and David Schwartz about a tech war with China. Interesting. Now, I, I liked this tweet. I like what he's saying here. He says, there will, Lord XRP, there will be no official announcement announcing that XRP will be used as a bridging currency in transactions. If someone waits for that, he's too late. Either you are in or out. Be prepared for stable four digit value. Now, folks, I'm not going to give you a price prediction here, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell you right now, the digital asset Investor is not here for single digits. The digital asset investor is not here for double digits. The digital asset investor is not here for triple digits. The digital asset investor is here for stable four digit value or more. I didn't come to this party for single, double, triple even. This is what I'm looking for. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button and tell your friends and family that soon it will be on like Donkey Kong. Thank you for listening. Every day, billions of people around the world are mocked 
ridiculed, laughed at and embarrassed by their friends, family and even strangers. These people go through their days knowing there are secrets being kept from them. They hear the faint whispers behind closed doors. The information and knowledge is held very close and only shared with others who were fortunate enough to find out. Feeling lost, rejected and ostracized, these people give up, never finding out what digital assets the digital asset investor holds. But there is hope. Join the free Digital Asset Investor email newsletter and find out what digital assets he owns each month, including investments he's considering. Click the link in the description of this video or go to digitalassetinvestornewsletter.com. Put an end to your days of gloom and depression. Join the greatest free digital asset email newsletter ever created.